Um, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I guess my background is a little bit outside of the um, web sort of thing. Uh, although we do do websites at Columbo Design Studio, we do branding and that sort of thing. But uh, as uh, he said, my focus is really on, on product design, product development, um, which is not such a widely known space here in Sri Lanka. However, when I was asked to talk here, I was kind of wondering what you people might find interesting. Um, and I think something that we're hearing a lot about in Sri Lanka recently, which is really nice, uh, is the word innovation, which has been thrown around um, uh, by a lot of companies. Obviously, you have big companies like MAS who have a whole division called MAS Innovation, but a lot more people are talking about that. And every so often, uh, people ask me, can I come and teach or show people how to be innovative or how to have ideas? And they say things like, can you run like an afternoon's workshop where we like magically teach everyone to be creative? Um, and, I, and I don't think that's very possible. But I thought what I might do is share some thoughts and observations I've had over the years um, uh, of having my own ideas, but also I've been lucky enough to work with some really, really amazing designers um, in London and I guess around the world a bit. Um, so these are kind of observations, reflections, just thoughts, that sort of thing. No uh, like scientifically verified information here. And most of it I'm going to make up on the spot. So um, if you feel like challenging me, please do. I know uh, audiences globally are notoriously bad at jumping in and interrupting speakers and things, but it would be nice if you feel like challenging what I'm saying, you can always do that or ask me afterwards or whatever. Um, so uh, I was in um, Africa last week, you know, as you are, and I was asked to come up with a topic for this, and I kept being asked over and over and over again, so I was like, okay, already, I'll talk about ideas and innovation and design realization, but basically, I want to kind of take you through how we do this from a product design point of view. Um, and by product design, I mean things like this product and this product and that product, so objects. Um, but these thoughts, I think, apply to any kind of creative process you might be um, trying to go through. Let's see if this thing works. Um, woo. Okay, so I'll start with the first bit, ideas. Um, there's no magic bullet to having ideas. This is what I mean about people asking if I can teach people to have ideas. I don't think I can. Um, but I don't, but it's, but kind of anyone can have ideas. That's the important thing. Uh, there's just, you know, I, what I find a bit interesting is everyone talks about kind of the IDEO design process and I'm going to formulate or formalize or create a process for having ideas. That's all very well, but um, in my experience, uh, uh, and certainly from when I was at school, we didn't really learn those kind of formulaic processes for having ideas. We just got on and started drawing them um, or, or writing them down or whatever. So I think, although there's no magic bullet, um, what you can start to do, or if you've got an inquisitive mind, is question everything. And this is something I tell my students at Moratua and the people who work for me and you know anyone else will listen. Really, you can... If you want to start to really challenge things, then you should really be questioning, questioning everything. Um, you know, is the seat you're sitting on comfortable? Is it suitable for what it's being used for? Does it work in this setting? Can everyone see because they're sitting in the seats laid out in the right way? You can find a million questions to ask about any context or scenario that you find yourself in. And that helps you to begin to, to generate that kind of inquisitive nature, if you like. Um, uh, while I'm not going to uh, sort of beat down on Sri Lanka, let's say, uh, although I, I mean I do educate people at Morito University and Academy of Design and places like that, and something I've noticed um, which I think needs to change is that the education system in Sri Lanka maybe doesn't encourage people to question everything. Um, and so what we find is that, uh, you know, this is a bit of a generalization, I'll admit, but it, uh, certainly from my experience I've seen this, um, especially authority, I go into university as an authoritative s sort of figure um, and therefore the students are totally petrified of me and take everything I say as, as gospel and really that's totally wrong, especially at university level, they should be hammering me with questions about everything I'm saying because again that's how you generate 
new thoughts is by questioning what the hell is going on and why is it like this. Um, so that's like my first rule, if you like, uh, which you don't have to follow. You can question it. Um, but basically, ask questions and challenge what you see around you, challenge what's going on. Uh, there are no wrong ideas. I think this is also really important. Um, you know, and it's difficult when you're faced with a blank sheet of paper, let's say, uh, or if you're in some kind of brainstorming session um, with a bunch of post-it notes, as it always tends to be these days, uh, you know, uh, in a group or even by yourself, you can have a thought and then you immediately dis dismiss it. Like, oh, no, that will never work. Ah, oh, you know, I should never have thought that. Or I'll have another idea. Or you try and chase down ideas in your head. But really, um, there are no wrong ideas. Get your ideas out there um, onto a piece of paper or something. And, and as they come out, then you've, you've parked them. You can revisit them or you can explore them further, whatever you want to do. But don't dismiss things, uh, especially not mentally. Make sure you're not kind of ticking, you know, checking your ideas in your head. Get them out of your head and in, onto something that you can then review. Um, I can't remember why I chose this image. There was a real reason for it. Anyway, I thought it was quite fun. But I don't know how it relates to there not being wrong ideas, unless that's a very daft thing to do. Who knows? Um, OK, another thing that's really important. First of all, spend some time if you're having ideas. Uh, this is something that really annoys me um, with clients who sort of say, OK, yeah, we want to completely rebrand our company, or we want to have the most fantastic, new, innovative thing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, cool, when do you want to do it by? Next week. You know, you're like, what? You can't have ideas that quickly. I mean, you can, but they're generally a bit rubbish. If you want to have good ideas, you need to settle into the space of thought that you're having and let it kind of sit in your head and, 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 and become a train of thought that is, that is there. And, and as you have ideas about a certain brief or topic or what it, whatever it might be, it'll, it'll get kind of expand and, and move around in your brain. So it's really important to spend some time um, and be disciplined about that. Uh, it's really easy these days, as we all know, everyone bangs on about this, but to be distracted by social media, you're sat at your desk, you're supposed to be having nice ideas in whatever field you might be uh, working in, and you're like, oh, just jump onto Facebook and see if I'm liked still, or I just whiz over to Instagram and share my lunch with everyone, whatever it might be. But really, it's, it's a good idea to get disciplined about that and to, and to settle in to some kind of creative space where, the, where you're not distracted for a reasonable period of time, which can be, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. It's not easy, but it's really worth it. But then the other important thing is to take a break from things. And I find that, um, and this is why a design process needs some time, quite often you'll be just hitting a wall with ideas. You know, write, you hear writer's block, that kind of thing. Designers get the same thing. It, we all do. You're just slamming into all. I, I'm sure lots of you here are programmers. You'll be wrestling with some piece of code. You just can't get past it. You can't have the idea. And then later that day, you're at home or whatever, or in the morning, I find quite often in the shower, suddenly you'll be like, oh, wait, that's such a great thing. So by spending some time to get into things and then allowing them to, to sort of settle and then taking a break and maybe doing some other active activity, especially sports, that kind of thing really helps, suddenly an idea will like just kind of come into your mind. And it's really amazing the way that can happen. Um, and really satisfying if it's a good idea. Uh, okay, this is something that I really uh, can't stress enough. I said it at the beginning. Obviously, as a product designer, we, we spend a lot of our time visually sketching ideas. Um, you find that uh, people have different ways to work through the design process. I mentioned earlier post-it notes. That's the kind of archetypal thing now, you know, with a board or even just a window where people are writing on it. Personally, I'm a big fan of a pencil, a bit of paper, just start drawing and get your ideas out. Again, I, this doesn't just apply to what I do. I think it applies to, to programming, that sort of thing. Visualizing what you're doing can really help you to, to work it out, basically, to tease it out of your brain and to let that come to the surface as a usable idea. And, and this goes hand in hand with the no idea is wrong, basically. You want to get as many of these on a page as you can. Uh, so that you can let them sit there and view them and review them and, and, 
and not to lock them away by dismissing them too early. So, uh, you know, one of the most important things you can have with you at all times is a sketchbook and a pencil or a pen. Something to get stuff out onto a bit of paper so that you can review it. I think that's a really fundamental part of having ideas. Okay, so um, I, with, how can I give you a, something to understand about this? I see this all the time with the graduates at, at Moratua and uh, maybe at Academy of Design, the ones that I see. Um, and in truth, all over the place. The, people have an idea, but they don't arrive at that idea. They just kind of like, ding, this will do. And there's no story behind it and there's no foundation to it. And it might be a really amazing idea. Sometimes you do have just a really amazing idea, but actually a lot of the good ideas come from a little bit of a journey, a little bit of a story that you create. And the great thing about that is you can then tell that story, especially if you're uh, presenting to clients um, who you need to buy into your idea, it's way easier if you have a nice little story that you can tell them. So what you want to look for is a foundation to your idea, something that you're, that you're basing it on, that then you can begin to build this journey, this story that you're then going to tell someone. And as you take them along that journey, you'll you know, you get buy-in from them because people love stories and they really believe them. So I think it's really important to, even if you almost post-rationalize, which is also super possible, students do it all the time. They do all of their research and everything the day before they present it. But it really does help to have a story to tell people because it helps you to connect the dots also with, with where you arrive at, the conclusion of your idea, and where you start, and, and believe it for yourself as well. So it's really um, worth getting into the habit of understanding how to how to craft and create a story uh, around an idea in order to help you take it through to its um, realization. Uh, and then this is also super important um, to have fun somehow. Uh, if you're working for clients trying to be creative, it's, it's a horrible amount of pressure to come up with clever stuff. Um, I don't know how many of you are creatives. Um, but this is the same for developing or uh, developing, you know, programming work. Like, oh, you know, there's the pressure to do it. I've got to get it right. I've got to be creative. I've got to come up with something new. Oh my God, new things are so hard to do. But you should be having fun. Um, and I, I sort of sometimes reflect, I guess, in my business, it's quite nice. Some days I'll spend all day drawing, which is amazing. I'm not an artist by a long, long, long stretch, but I have spent all day with just a pen and a piece of paper or whatever it is, just kind of drawing away or plasticine or making a complete mess or getting messy and getting grubby and that sort of thing. So it, it's really important to have fun and be playful. Um, it is a bit scary or it can be a bit scary because you're, you're taking your ideas and putting them out there for the world to criticize. But um, it's important to try and maintain that level of fun. If you look at children, I know it's a very cliched analogy, Young children explore and challenge everything through fun. And in fact, most of nature does that. Um, and that's how you, you find your boundaries, you, you learn things. Um, you know, what on earth is play for? It's not just for fun, haha, but it is for exploring things and working stuff out. So it's a really good idea to remember that you should be having fun. If you're sitting there crying onto a blank sheet of paper, you're not doing it right, unless you love crying. Okay, so that's a little bit on ideas. Um, as I said, I don't have any magic bullet for having ideas, but I have thoughts on things that I've seen. Um, is everyone's favorite word at the moment innovation, uh, or maybe it's sliding out of fashion, but it has been in the last year or so. And, and I think that's really great. I think it's amazing that in Sri Lanka, uh, uh, this idea of innovation is being seen as really important to the economy and to the future of Sri Lanka. Um, Sri Lanka is amazing. I've been here six years and been coming back and forth for a long time. Um, its location is amazing. Its resources are amazing. The people are amazing. There's, there's so many reasons why it's such an amazing country. And obviously it was paralyzed for 30 odd years by a horrible war, which, which put a pause button on a lot of things. But it also, from my reflection, seemed to shrink horizons. Um, people were not thinking in very long term goals and things because basically things could change obviously 
uh, horribly, very rapidly, and in even the bigger companies. But thankfully, in the last uh, so many years since the war, uh, really I'm starting to see companies think in bigger, longer terms. And innovation takes time. It's not a magic bullet thing. You can't just be like, right, now we're going to innovate something. It's really not that easy. To create a culture of innovation within a company takes a long time and it takes a lot of that education that I was talking about to come through. So hopefully we'll see lots of things changing. But it's great that the word is there and the idea is there and the, and the, the thought that we're going to create something new here. Because intellectual property as, uh, as a value uh, is enormous. Um, it's way better than just kind of labor or any of those things. Having intellectual property as a country is, is massively beneficial. So what can I say about innovation? It's not invention. Uh, I think that's quite important to separate the two. Invention is quite a different thing uh, as far as I'm concerned than innovation. Um, invention is, is kind of creating something entirely new. This is the Wright brothers, you know, who more or less invented flying, which is quite amazing, obviously. But they, they sort of did that from, from scratch, more or less. Um, Whereas I think innovation is a lot more about recognizing existing technology or recognizing things that you see uh, and thinking, wow, I could just apply that somewhere else. Um, a classic example uh, is uh, Dyson's bagless vacuum cleaner. I hope you guys might know what I'm talking about. But essentially, he saw that technology in some massive industrial process. He didn't invent it. But he thought, wait a second, I could transfer that or some bit of it and create something new which is innovation. Um, and so I think the, the important thing to remember about that is that you can keep your eyes open. And when you're trying to have ideas, just let your mind flow around things you've seen or things you might have um, you know, uh, stumbled upon or something. You know, you thought, wow, that's interesting. But this can come from all sorts of different areas. Um, I think the, the amazing thing about working for design consultancies uh, is that you get to work in all these different areas. So I'm lucky enough to have worked on hair dryers for Remington and aircraft seats for Etihad Airways. And in between all of those things are all sorts of crossovers, materials, technologies, uh, processes, manufacturing things, all of these things that you can apply between one and the other um, if you just kind of have a little think about why you might do it and, and you know what use it might be. Um, and I think the other thing, you know, try and solve real problems. I, I, we're in this like mad rush to be the first or the first to copy something somewhat useless like Snapchat or something. You know, can you can you do something interesting and, and innovative that's actually useful? Um, Sri Lanka is is a is an amazingly blank canvas actually for for that kind of space for creating genuinely useful uh, tools. Um, you know, I think that ODOC thing is really interesting. The the dengue reporting apps another really interesting piece of innovative use of, of technology. Um, we're not seeing that much useful come out of internet of things or wearable technology, uh, seeing a lot of kind of nonsense products in that space. I think people can't really get their head around what would be useful. But there is lots of useful things that we could do um, that would be amazing for Sri Lanka and amazing for, for planet Earth. Um, so if you're thinking of the next big digital platform, maybe it's not an Instagram clone or something like that. Maybe there's something a bit more interesting you can do. Um, okay, realization, uh, then this is about getting stuff into reality. Um, okay, so an idea remains an idea until you do something about it. Um, I'm personally super guilty of, of having ideas and then not doing anything about them. And, um, and then they're nothing. They're just an idea scribbled down on a piece of paper. So the realization bit is really important. If you, you know, it's no good just having loads of ideas and then lamenting when, they're, when they're, someone else does them and makes them into a reality. If you've got a good idea, then you need to kind of knuckle down and have a go at making it a reality. Um, we're lucky because we live in a, in a uh, sort of fantastical time where uh, there's, there's the capability to realize things, especially digital things, but now we're sneaking into physical things and, and the crossover between those two is becoming ever uh, easier, basically. Um, if you look at, you know, 
again, it's reasonably cliche to say and obvious, but if you look at platforms like Arduino or any of these very, very cheap microcontrollers, coupled with if this, then that kind of connectivity platforms and then all this data that we have, um, the, the ease that you can pair these things and innovate and create amazing things is, is bonkers, really. Um, to give you an example of my own uh, super limited talents, about four years ago, I was taking the buses around the place and I realized there was no uh, bus information. So I literally hacked together a, a WordPress platform with Google Maps API that I could just about manage to do. And I'm not a developer at all, but I worked it out. And now that uh, website is getting something like 50,000 um, users a month. And it's rubbish. <laughs> it's like the worst website ever, but people are using it because there's nothing else. But it was only a weekend's work to create that thing just because other people have done all the hard work um, for us. It's not as easy in, in my general field product design because when we're creating things that need to be mass produced, there's a lot more complications. But I think we do live in a fantastic time where you can really realize ideas much easier than, than previously. Um, bootstrap, uh, you know, I think it's, again, that's more or less what I'm talking about. You can hack things together. You can do that with, with physical products as well. If you've got an idea for the next, whatever, auto hammer, um, again, there's a lot of equipment out there. There's a lot of stuff online. There's YouTube videos on almost anything you can think of, which can help you learn how to do something, how to join the dots between one technology and another. Um, we, we really live in an incredible uh, era for that kind of thing, which allows us to realize these ideas um, in such a nice way and so easily. Use appropriate technology. Um, I, this is gonna sound probably a little bit odd, I'm a massive cynic about 3D printing because I think it's being sold for the wrong thing, basically. Um, 3D printing is really not new. Um, I graduated last century and we were using 3D printing back then. It was really expensive um, and limited, but it essentially was exactly the same as it is now, which is a prototyping tool. Yes, there's some space for 3D printing for manufacturing, but at the moment, there's this idea that we're all going to have a, a, a 3D printer in our kitchen that's going to make replacement light bulbs, uh, new shoes, hamburgers, and all of this stuff. But I think that an analogy, which isn't that much of a leap for you, is, is just normal printing. Yes, you probably all got a printer, but if you want to photo print, you go to the people with the photo printers because you have to spend that much more to get an actually good print, even of a color photo. And if you think about the complications of printing things, then it's like massively more complicated than just making a color picture. Um, so I thought this, this just amused me like a hammer made from 3D printing. It's a nonsense thing, unless you just wanna print the shape of a hammer, but really those all exist as real life things. So they've been proven. It's a, it's a prototyping technology. There are lots of them. I think where 3D printing is really fascinating is somewhere like the International Space Station, where the entire thing is a prototype. So if you want a new switch on the International Space Station, you can either send down to Earth and get Elon Musk to send you one, or you can print one. Suddenly that's a different proposition. That's really interesting. And some medical uses, making replacement bits of body, where we're also all kind of prototypes. So we're all unique. Great, amazing use of technology. Um, and not to just hammer on about 3D printing, there are other kind of mismatched use of technology. Um, to give you digital examples, I, I speak to clients recently who want us to build web platforms for them. And they're always like, we want a custom, bes you know, super bespoke thing. And I'm like, you know what? We could probably bootstrap this in like a week with WordPress and you would have a functioning version of your idea in a very short space of time that would cost you not much money. And let's see if it works. And if it doesn't work, well, then you haven't spent too much money. And if it does, great. Maybe WordPress will keep working or maybe you need a custom one after that. But I see people kind of, yeah, kind of misusing or not understanding the technology available and, and really not um, using it sensibly. If you believe it, stick with it. I, I, I'm not so keen on this idea of like fail fast. It sort of annoys me a little bit because it's like, no, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. What happened to that? What happened to getting things right? Failing and then be like, hang on a minute, I better actually pull my socks up and get this right because 
I got it wrong the first time instead of just being like, mm, well, I failed, I'm going to leave it off. I mean, fine, stick a sports car in space, awesome. That's believing in what you're doing by like a massive margin. You know, Steve Jobs and, and Johnny Ive, like persistence. Who wants an iPad? No one thought that was a good idea and we're all using iPads. They created it, they, had, they knuckled down, they didn't go like, oh no, we're not going to do it, no one believes in it. If you've got a good, strong idea and you believe in it, then knuckle down and do it. Don't be failing all over the place and then going crying home to mummy and daddy. And find yes people to work to, uh, work with, sorry. I heard um, a great quote somewhere and I can't remember it, so I'm not going to tell you, but essentially it meant the same thing. It was like, how many, how many of your conversations, when you put an idea out there, the immediate response is, yes, but, you know? Yes, but, we could, but, maybe, you know, people start to beat down on things. Find the right people, the yes people, who are like, yeah, let's do it. We can get on with this. Awesome, I'll help you. I know this guy who can do that, and blah, blah, blah. Those are the people you want to work with. Um, get people drunk, they say yes way more easily. But, you know, like, get the right people behind you. Uh, we, we bang into this all the time with, with manufacturing uh, people because engineers are notoriously... They want an easy path. And I kind of understand it. If you've got to make a bridge or an airplane or something like that, do you really want some designer coming along and telling you that they want like pink wallpaper? Not really. You just want to get the thing flying. However, there's a bigger picture to this. You know, things need to sell for those products to be uh, commercially viable. If you design on spreadsheets or you let engineers design things, they don't sell. They are engineered or spreadsheet or designed by committee which is all horrible so you need yes people to say yes i can do it i can have a go at this we can make it work and you know let's do it all right so a few examples i have no long no how long have i been talking how long do i have i've just been gibbering on as usual <clears throat> um so a few examples just because i i don't usually like it when people just show like hey, this is me, I'm so awesome. But I figured some of these are relevant to what I've been talking about. So here we go. Waggle, uh, super millennial spelling of waggle. This was a little idea that we came up with a few years ago that I thought was interesting in the space of wearable technology. I'd forgotten about it till I was thinking about this talk. And I thought, huh, it's quite fun, actually. Initial spark, can we use wearables for something useful? Um, I thought it would be quite interesting to create some little Bluetooth fuzzy band things for basically visually impaired people to help them navigate. Um, I was thinking about this a lot for cycling also. I do quite a lot of cycling and it's quite hard to pay attention to a map. Um, if you're like me, you don't really want to strap your phone to your bike. Um, could, you, could we make a little left and right buzzer that kind of helps you navigate? I think, you know, Apple Watch has come out subsequently. They have a lot more money than me for developing stuff. Uh, so they've worked it out. However, I thought it was quite a nice little thought and, you know, we, we could take it as far as doing a concept idea like this. Um, if we were clever, maybe we would have moved that into production. Um, but this idea is still just an idea. So I didn't realize that one. Uh, the most awesome sunglasses ever. More millennials speak. I'm staying with my audience here, obviously. Um, what fun can we have with recycled plastic? We've been working with a really funky company based in the East Coast called uh, Rice and Carry. They make... Uh, they upcycle rice bags into cool like iPad cases and, and little beach totes and stuff. But subsequently, they have a lot of off-cut material, which is all polypropylene. Um, and we paired that with some groovy Danish or Dutch or German people. I get confused, as you know, just a, um, who made a bunch of open source recycling equipment. And uh, we were like, what can we do with this that would be really fun? So we set about designing some sunglasses. And I hope you observe that the process is all here. Sketchy, 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 CAD model -y, prototype -y. Prototyping in my world can be as simple as bits of paper. You don't have to go to 3D printing levels. Look, we got four bits of cardboardy stuff. And just to give you an idea of costs, does this have a pointy thing? I don't know whether that's pointing. Ooh, just about. Those 3D prints cost me 9,000 rupees, which is way more than I've ever spent on an actual pair of sunglasses. And as you can see, they're rubbish sunglasses. So 3D printing is not cheap either, um, but cardboard is really cheap. So if you want to mess around prototyping ideas, bits of paper, bits of plasticine, blue foam, wood, all of that stuff is way cheaper than, than 3D printing. 
Here's our, our CAD model down here, including the mold that we designed. Here's my friend Henry watching some dude with a lathe in somewhere on the East Coast. Uh, and this is the, the more 3D printing, CNCing. And then CNC is a, another type of prototyping and also manufacturing process. If you've got a MacBook Pro or any of the cloney sort of things from aluminium, they're all CNC'd also. Amazing process. And there are sunglasses. So we sort of proudly made these. Hopefully we'll be selling them before too long. Made from old rice bags, which is super interesting. But there's a whole nice story behind that. If you want to go back to the story thing, um, creating employment in the East, uh, predominantly for uh, women, which is great um, because it's quite conservative over there. And there's a little bit of complication with people finding work, especially in, for, for women. Um, so Henry and Susie have done an amazing job creating a whole industry out of old rice bags. Um, and what we're doing is taking the waste from their waste products. So we're, we're trying to make a zero waste kind of scene um, and making something quite nice and useful. Um, a, a lot of the stuff from this precious plastic stuff is a bit nonsense, spinning tops and kind of useless things. You see the same thing with 3D printing. People make like a Yoda or something or a Darth Vader head. And there's no use to that. It's a nonsense um, product. But I think these are genuinely quite a nice little thing. Uh, and this is, I showed my presentation to a friend of mine. And she was like, oh, you should talk about what happens when you're working for clients. And you, you get all your ideas out and everyone's loving it and you're working through it. And then you get all the way to the end and then they say, like, no, we don't want to do that anymore. So I thought I'd throw it in here. Be prepared for U-turns. Um, we're lucky enough to be work, working with Lion Breweries. Um, lucky because I like beer. Although, to be fair, I haven't had a single free beer from them uh, for all my hard work. However, it's cheap enough for me not to really care about that. So, their, their spark was, how do we take the wine stores and turn them into a retail space as opposed to something that looks like a jail full of uh, awesome looking sarong johnnies to terrify everyone. Their brief to me was like, get your wife in there to buy a beer, basically. So turn it from jail to retail. Um, and they were like, we want, we want like it all to be beer. We want like two halves where you have one side is like a really nice retail shop and the other side is kind of the jail shop. And we had all this thinking to do with how to manage people and the different kinds of people and the different times of day, you know, pre poya rush, that sort of thing. Um, the 10 a.m. rush for all the bosses out there. Um, and also the flow of beer and how they store things. There was a lot of thinking on this. Um, we had these nice thoughts about kind of hidden conveyor belts so that so the beer crates could be loaded from the street and it'd flow down a ramp uh, full of beer and then they could be loaded on the shelves and then you put the empty crates and they flow back out. And this is the, this is the street here so the delivery guy doesn't even have to come in the shop. You know, we had lots of funky thinking. And they wanted it all beer. They were like, the beeriest thing you've ever seen. We just want beer cues everywhere. People need to know this is all about beer. It's got beer, beer, beer. So we worked for three months on beer. And they were like, we want it to be about the youth. No more beer. It's just all about youth and lifestyle. So we had to take all of our designs and throw them out the window and start again on like, what does it mean to be kind of young and funky and blah, blah, blah. So we started to introduce completely different language. So that happens. You can either kind of sit there and, you know, throw things at people or you can say okay great well that's what happens with ideas they change they move they're fluid um, when you're working with brands they have a lot of different ideas going on quite often the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing um, you're there to help them to guide them to try and steer them to tell the story and to kind of make it cohesive and make sense but you're also there to respond to what they're doing um, we're not like Philip Stark if any of you've heard of Philip Stark or Mark Newson there are some designers who have a real like identity of their own that they hammer onto their clients. Our job or my job is to understand who my clients are and then tell their story for them in a new and innovative way. Uh, so we support some startups locally. This is a local company making scientific equipment for IVF treatment, that sort of thing. Um, I'm a design bully or I try to be. We were approached by John Keels um, to work out. Uh, any of you heard of Plastic Cycle, the John Keels Recycling Initiative? A few. We need to do a bit more work, obviously. Our job was the campaign to tell people about it. Um, however, in the uh, 
in coming up with that, they showed me this amazing bin on the top left. They were like, we're going to have a bin. It's going to be blah, blah. And the whole point of this thing is to get people recycling. And I said, can we design the bin, please? And they're like, why, why do we need to? It's just a recycling bin. I was like, look, the bin is your touch point. It's the one part of this whole project that you're asking customers to interact with. So it's really important. If it was your website and it was, you know, a touch point like that, you understand the same thing, like trying to get them to understand that, that the kind of terrifying looking Russian circus lion cage is not a nice thing to, uh, to like interact with. And I'm and they're asking people to go out of their way to recycle things. So they gave us a week, which as I mentioned at the very beginning is not enough to digest and think about things. However, we came up with this friendly looking little bin, a little bit more difficult to make, but it's got a little bit of personality. It's become its own little identity. There's something going on there, which is quite nice. We kind of pulled it into the brand. And this little thing on the far corner is just to show the difference between the way we work at Columba Design Studio and how things are designed in wood or paint or whatever. So we make proper drawings that are, you can give to a manufacturer and they're fully detailed and, and you know, ready to go with everything the right size. Um, and hopefully, now that I've told you about it, you can all go and recycle your plastics um, at the John Keels outlets using the plastic cycle BIM. Um, and I think that's me. So thank you very much. Sorry if I've gone on too long. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Or if we do that at the end, you can let me know. I don't know what the scene is here. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Um, you've been great. Hey guys, any questions? Lab? Hi, good evening, sir. Um, I'm Charajit Sunimaratna. Uh, well, I happen to live in USA, and uh, there was which which you mentioned about the beer. They were trying to uh, improve the sales by uh, keeping the beer can beer cards next to uh, kids, infants, uh, diapers, and other stuff which ultimately became a horrendous uh, issue with regards to the co commercial uh, co bureau and they wanted to ban this thing because ultimately they found out that they wanted to do that because of the fact that uh, the fathers are the ones who come and do the uh, shopping for the kids in the weekends. So they wanted to use that marketing strategy in order to sell the beer. You might have heard that story. Okay. There was some kind of issue and ultimately they had to take out because of the uh, ethical issues and moral issues of the, uh, the marketing campaign they have uh, put. So you think like, I don't know how much of a productivity that has, uh, what kind of a strategy that you have brought and I didn't understand, I'm like, except for the art designs and etc. So how much was the productivity of your, uh, the art, I'm mean, like the designer camp, uh, the infrastructure thing that you have done and in order to sell a product like that, what kind of a out of the box kind of a uh, uh, thing that you can advise? Thank you. For, uh, for the lion people? I mean, like for any kind of a thing that you can, I mean, like uh, segment it with some kind of different product, like what I told you, like the diapers and beer. Which you told yeah. You. So, I mean, Thanks. That, that's interesting. I mean, Sri Lanka's just on the beer front, Sri Lanka's really complicated for advertising alcohol you, you basically can't which is why it was amazing uh, like a month ago when a certain mangala uh, finance minister was quoted to say like beer is healthier than sweet drinks and it was on the front page of the newspaper i immediately sent that to my client i was like what more can you ask for this is like front page of the newspaper finance minister like better than coca-cola drink beer i was like our work here is done um Obviously, like in terms of um, in terms of uh, understanding the value of design, uh, uh, it's not okay. So design, like product design and and real kind of design, even like really good branding work, the 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 financial gains are quite long term. They take a little while to settle in. But I put it like this: the most valuable company on earth, I think, is still Apple who have design at the, at the very, very core of their business. And it didn't happen in like six weeks. It took a long, long time. So if you want any kind of verification of the value of design, I would say you don't really need to look any further than that. I don't know if my designs have reached the stratospheric kind of Apple level, but we, we you know, uh, we've been working on a lot of product in the last six months. 
I think three times in three separate client meetings, a client said to me, we've been doing this for 15 years and I've never seen design like ideas like this. So obviously we're coming up with new things that they find uh, really good, um, even though we're not in those industries. So by, by allowing us to, to kind of disrupt, if you like, with ideas, um, they're getting new stuff that they wouldn't get but because they're focusing on their kind of normal marketing or production activities, if you like. So I would argue that the value of design is like enormous. Um, and uh, we've been doing a little bit of work to try and form a group here, a bit like the Design Council, to try and understand the value of the creative industries in Sri Lanka, because actually they're growing, uh, particularly in fashion, there's a lot of creative industry, but in, in tech, uh, there's also loads. Um, so it has a huge value for the economy. Um, and, and for your products, I just can't think that there's any dispute that good design matters, that having well-designed, well-thought-through things, whether it's a website, an app, a door handle, a light switch, it makes a huge difference if you design it well. Um, it's the difference between people telling their friends that they ought to buy your brand and them telling their friends that they've got the worst thing ever, don't go near it. Um, you know, that's like the design difference. And think about what a recommendation means to you. If your friend says, check this out, it's awesome, you're extremely likely to go and buy it. More likely, I would say, than if you're just bombarded by adverts on your Facebook stream. I've no idea if I even answered what you were asking, but hopefully a little bit. <laughs>